Well, we now have a third conversation. I'd like to welcome up uh, onto the stage Vineet Rai from Avishkar Intellicap Group. Thank you. Thank you. I think you might have been the voice in my brain earlier. I think that had been, that'd been the, the voice we had a little bit early going on. Uh, Vineet, if, 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 I'll start as I did with the other two conversations. What's leadership uh, with, with the SDGs here for you? What, what, what do you think it is? Yeah, well, I think the challenge for all of us, and I actually spoke at Delhi uh, in the same similar kind of conference mm -hmm. by Global Compact. Uh, I think human beings have never lived without poverty. We've always had poverty, we've always had hunger. Since the time Homo sapiens started being called human beings, uh, we are talking about a challenge that uh, we have never in our history, mm -hmm. I don't know, 50,000 years of history, have ever actually dealt with. And suddenly here we are in 15 years, or less than 15 years now, 13 years actually, we are trying to get rid of uh, poverty, hunger, and things that we have never seen go away. And I think to me, uh, that actually is leadership, where you challenge yourself is something as audacious and what I found funny was that the governments of the world, which are normally very conservative, came forward to actually look at this. And ultimately, leadership is to actually deliver on something that you believe cannot be done. Talk and about engaging, taking that idea with local entrepreneurs, what you do, SMEs. H how, does this, how does this translate for you when you're dealing with those groups? So uh, I started with a very simple problem. In 2001, or yeah. actually 94, when yeah. I passed out and was posted in a forest, I'm a forester, I used to live in a forest. Uh, I was quite surprised by what, what I saw on the ground. Uh, the world was very unfair, was very clear to me. Uh, a lot of people uh, were struggling to, to get things that we actually believe they should get without any, uh, without any struggle. Mm -hmm. And that struggle, or that, uh, that being away completely, uh, basically made me realize that uh, uh, you need to somehow take these people and uh, make them rich. Essentially, if you go and ask a poor person, what do you want to be, he wants to be rich. And rich is nothing but actually having access to facilities that you and I have, uh, taking them to water, clean water, sanitation, etc. cetera. Uh, business seemed to be one of the ways where you can increase incomes uh -huh. and reduce vulnerabilities. And that's essentially what uh, making a person rich is. Uh, there is a lot of work that is being done using capital that is coming from donations, charity, et cetera. And there seemed to be a chance that business could play a role in making this unreal world, making rich, poor people rich happen. And that's essentially what we are trying to do. Uh, it's not that complex to communicate, actually. Uh, how do you do that? Well, actually, if you start a business, you create jobs. So every business in the world, including- So you're helping business, to start businesses this is where the, yeah. where the way But if you can focus. start a business where the business doesn't want to start, uh -huh. that's where you make a difference. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, generally, capital and talent has a reason to, it's like water coming down the hill. Mm -hmm. They will always go to New York, Manhattan, San Francisco, uh, Mumbai, Delhi. Nobody wants to go to places where there's no, there's no capital, no talent. Nobody wants to work there. Nobody wants to create a business there. Give an example of you doing this. Yeah, so we have actually created companies in low-income states of India. There's a state called Orissa, where I actually lived and worked in the forest. Uh, there is, this, this is a significant tribal population. And this population essentially, uh, generally, is hunter-gatherer. Generally, coming from that background, does not actually either plow or till land, nor does it actually have animal husbandry. So it doesn't have cows or milk, et cetera. Uh, generally, therefore, capital would never go there to create a dairy. Why? Because there's no local milk. Uh, but this state also has significant amount of large cities mm -hmm. where there are urban people who want milk. So it's a counterintuitive theory. You go in and create a dairy, you have a fairly large population that doesn't have access to milk and wants milk. Uh, you don't have a supply. You have to take an extraordinary risk of putting in capital, going and creating a back end, pasteurize the milk, and then sell. But once you sell, you not only create massive jobs in rural farm, and at the same time, in front end, you actually have a fairly successful mm -hmm. business coming through. How many times have you done something like this? We have, made 50, we have made 55 investments across uh, yeah, yeah. India, Indonesia, oh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. Thank and you. we have done everything from fisheries. So around 13 goals here from health, uh, hunger, poverty, You've covered uh, 13 food so processing. Far? 13, yeah. 13 goals actually rhyme with the work that we do. Huh. When are you going to get to the other four? 
<laughs> well, I'm not sure actually we can do the four, but the 13 rhymes I, I, I think people think you can do it here, right? He's, he might as well just round it out, well, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, so, uh, all right. Um, <laughs> where are you getting the money from? <laughs> yeah, well, that's actually the challenging part. Remember, I'm a forester, I used to live that's in the really forest, so I did not know where to find money. So I started off with my personal $100. I think you're going to say it's uh, growing on trees since you're yeah, in the forest. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely, yeah. I actually did believe that. Started thank with you. Whoever laughed, thank you for laughing. That was, uh, <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah, it was, yeah. not good, but, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Like so with the hundred dollar that I started with, I actually tried to look for rich people. Uh, initially, it took me five years to reach a million dollar from the hundred hundred dollars I started with. Generally, most people found me cute and actually gave me the money that they would have spent <laughs> on their children's birthday party. Uh, but over a period of time, over seven years, I actually realized that uh, uh, once we started demonstrating that yeah. this could be done, even in very small amount, mm -hmm. my first investment was as small as twenty thousand uh, dollars. There was a change. The other thing that I realized was that my pitch was also very cute. I was actually going and telling people that I want, give me your money, I will change the world. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound a great pitch in case you really want to change the world. Never tell them that you can. <laughs> so I changed my pitch. I started telling them that, uh, give me your money and I'll deliver you returns that you have never seen. Uh, now I also know in venture capital it takes 10 years. So anything that they want, I promised and I accepted. And I said, during the process we'll change lives and people were very happy. Yeah. And once you started building companies, and those companies took time, yeah. but started delivering a change as well as a commercial side, the same people who are not willing to participate or were very suspecting of our motives of what we were doing uh, are, are basically in a very interested manner participating at a large scale. And today it is called impact investing, not something which is unknown to the world. Uh, we last count I heard two days back that we had $12 billion of capital around the globe. A uh, significant part of that is going to emerging con continents uh, and countries. Asia and Africa see a significant amount, and so does Latin America. That is great. And is all your portfolio social impact space? 100%. 100%. And, and this is a space when, if you're in the valley, folks are going, where do I find money like this? Yeah, well, actually, I mean, you're, you're kind of a unicorn, uh, which is great. That's why you're here. This is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think the challenge really is that people, uh, people want to find businesses that l look and feel or resemble mm -hmm. to what they have been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you might have to actually tweak uh, some of the concepts of business. For example, Silicon right. Valley has 80% failure rate, 20% success rate. I cannot afford to have failures because every failure of mine would lead to actually a large number of people not having access mm. to food, et cetera, et cetera. So what we have done, and Avishka is a case study in Stanford Business School, for the simple reason, despite being a startup investor, despite being at zero level, we actually have a 72% success rate. Wow, so, uh, what's the, and we're down to 60 seconds here, what is the key criterion you are looking for when a potent, when, a, when I come in to pitch to you? What, what are you looking for? Three things, uh, do you have the grit to last the grime that you are going to get into? Uh, second, are you trying to change the world? Uh, and I actually, if you say that you are trying to change the world, chances are we'll not invest in you. Uh, because <laughs> so don't say it, but you're gonna look for it, right? Yeah, so show it. does your business actually say it rather than you saying it? So we don't believe in the mouthing of the words. Uh -huh. So if somebody says I'm very passionate, we actually reject him. Got it. Somebody says I'm gonna change the world, reject them. But if somebody demonstrates that they are passionate and actually change the world, then we invest in them. Right. In one word, what inspires you to do this? Well, to make poor people rich. All right. That's more than one word, but it's a <laughs> great one word. Thank you Thank so you. much, Vinny Rai, so ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.